my granddad collected just an extraordinary number of books over his lifetime and um, nobody ever counted them. He catalogued most of the great Judaica libraries in the world over the last 30, 40 years, but he never really catalogued his own. And he had these twin collections, one socialist library, which was probably the rarest socialist library in private hands anywhere in the world. And then this Judaica library, which certainly was one of the rarest Jewish history libraries in the English language world. And he had this incredible number of rare books, rare manuscripts, letters, documents, and he had never fully catalogued it. So it was just a sort of estimate as to how many books he had. And I eyeballed it when he died, and it seemed to me it was roughly 20,000 books. I might have been off by a couple thousand here or there, but every single wall of every single room, with the exception of the kitchen and the exception of the two small bathrooms, was lined with books. And most of the bookshelves were double shelves, so there was books, and then behind them there were more books. And then when we were opening airing closets, and some of these airing closets probably hadn't been opened in years, and we'd open the closets and books would fall out. <laughs> and we'd open the wardrobes and instead of clothes there'd be more books and posters and Bibles and just everything you can imagine written. And so I estimated about 20,000 books and I thought, well, if I'm going to write about this house, probably aren't very many houses in the world with 20,000 books. That's more like a library. You know, you're, you're getting up to sort of land grant library status at that point. Um, and so I wrote about it and titled it The House of 20,000 Books. Passage I wrote. Children take the environments they are familiar with for granted, and so it was that for many, many years I simply assumed that all old people lived in book houses, every wall lined with musty old tomes containing the secrets of history, politics, philosophy, religion, art. I assumed that it was entirely normal to spend one's time arguing the merits of various obscure socialist doctrines in between the matzo ball soup and the roast duck. I concluded, wrongly, I subsequently learned, that most children had Spinoza and Marx, Rosa Luxemburg and Hegel quoted to them as morality tales by their grandfathers.